The verse which I have recited is from Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number two, verse 120. Allah says, "Inna dina عند الله Islam, the religion which is going to be accepted in the sight of Allah is Islam. The reason why I have quoted this verse or segment, you see, we have to understand first some terminologies in Islam. And then I will come to my main topic. First of all, what is Islam? It means peace with the total submission to Allah's will, God's will. And beside that, all the fundamental principles and philosophies, we bring them together inside it. And it is called Deen, the way of life. This is what Islam is. Islam is par excellence. It is not just rites and rituals, as all of the religions they claim. Islam is the total socio-political economic system together, and we call it Deen. It has rites and rituals, plus all the qualities of way of life. No other religion claims that other than Islam. And regarding rites and rituals, we have one word, we call it Madhab. And we do not find this in Quran. As far as my knowledge is being concerned, I don't think it's also to be found in a hadith. But I am not sure about that. I'm not the scholar of a hadith or expert. There are so many hadiths, and I can never claim, nobody can ever claim like he's totally versed to understand them all. So for my knowledge so far, I don't think so the word has been uttered once. The only system we understand is Deen, way of life, how to do things in social laws, political laws and economical laws. Now this is the terminology. Now coming to other words we have in Islam, you see one word we call it sect, S-E-C-T, firqa in Arabic you can call it. It means when something is there a notion in one of the groups and it is diverting away from Islam we call it a sect meaning you are different I am different <clears throat> then we have also the school of thoughts and many people they get confused or mix these things together like Imam Shafi'i, Imam Hanbali, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah, all of them they mix their fiqh or fiqh we call it jurisprudence jurisprudent laws, which we call it analogical induction to analogical deduction, qiyas, this all field they mix up and they call it firqa, a sect which is wrong. That's not a sect. These are different school of thoughts and all comes in one ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. This is a terminology which Prophet ﷺ used by himself. Me and my people, ahl of sunnah wal jama'ah are the people who, whose faces will be brightened on the day of judgment. And this is not my words. This is the tafsir, <coughs> Ibn Kathir. If you read Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 115 onwards and 14, you will see the interpretation that on the day of Yom Al Qiyamah, there will be people whose faces will be brightened like white, something flash, something beautiful. And those people will be from my Ahl Sunal Jama'ah, and Prophet said that we are sitting like that, whosoever follows us, the way we are dealing Islam, those people will call my Jama'at. So some people say that, you know, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'at is not mentioned anywhere. Prophet never said we are Muslims. Yes, we are Muslims. We are Muslims towards or against the disbelievers. Allah says in the Quran, when these kuffar do not believe in you, tell them we are Muslims. If they turn away, tell them we are Muslims. This is against the kuffar, not against in our own understanding of our jama'at. We have to say, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'at, to, to tell the people that we are the jama'at of Orthodox, the jama'at which Prophet and Sahaba, and they all understood simultaneously. And why it's important, I will tell you later on. Because nowadays, any Tom, Dick and Harry claims that I'm Muslim, and when you start scratching, his ideologies are atheistic, skeptics, 
Qadianis, Ahmadis, these people claim that, which is my topic today, these people claim that we are Muslims. It doesn't prove anything. Every person who, claim, who just reads Shahada doesn't become a Muslim. He is reading Shahada and inside his heart, he is believing that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is also Muhammad. Na'uzubillah, astaghfirullah. So we cannot accept these kind of things. Clarify yourself. So this is what the point is. Sect means something you are different and you are going away and you have some differences between the fundamentals or non-fundamental points in Islam. And maybe you are honest. We cannot give fatwa on your, on your batin. Maybe you are honest. We cannot give fatwa on batin. Whatever in your hearts. Maybe you are honest and in after honesty, you are preaching and you created your own sects. I don't want to call what are those sects. It's not my business. But this is the point I'm explaining to you. So understand these terminologies. Don't ask that who is uh, the sect in front of you. I will not tell I don't care about these things. Allah knows the hearts of people as long as they are not doing shirk, as long as they are not associating partners with Allah, then we can discuss and have a debate. Otherwise, nobody is a child, nobody is a baby. He knows, everyone knows who is God and everybody knows that no, no, nobody can protect him or anyone except Allah. Simple. We don't need to just, you know, start scratching these values anymore. Second, the, I already explained the second point, like schools of thoughts. And we have different schools and schools are created through the system we call it Qiyas and then we have Ijma. Quran, Sunnah. Sunnah means the right Hadith, the authentic Hadith of Prophet ﷺ. Then we have Ijma, the consensus of scholars, how much they agree, what is the momentum, where the momentum lies, we follow that. And if they are wrong in their concepts, Allah will forgive them if they are honest. People will not be asked in questions on that. But people should also strive and struggle to find the truth. But do not, you know, object the scholars and do not disrespect them by having this concept that they are, they know nothing, we know everything. You don't know, maybe out of courtesy you are doing something, but you do not know Maybe the, or the scholar, he's honest and this is what he thinks and he's honest uh, in front of you or whatever inside his heart. So you cannot judge and give fatwa on that. So this is the system we have it. So whatever the majority of ulamas, they agree, we follow that. Then the fourth is the section we call it Qiyas. In English, I can explain is analogical induction or analogical deduction to induce and deduce. You have some points coming in front of you, a question comes, a query. And then after that, you have to see, uh, make a whole, uh, you know, round on Quran, then Hadith, then Ijma. And after that, you still uh, having something not clear. Then the guy who is expert, not every Tom, Dick and Harry, who has the knowledge of Hadith, science of Hadith, philosophy of Quran, philosophy of Hadith, and his history of Islam, he should also have the knowledge of all the Sahaba and the historians and whatever, so ever, etc. After that, he must analyze, compute all that data. And then at last, he will finalize it and give his verdict. That becomes his ishtihad. And that we call it Qiyas, analogical induction to deduction. He deduce it by inducing all the values and give it to you. And then we take it that point. So these things created the school of thoughts. So we respect all those ulamas, all those, you know, uh, fik, fik, fiki issues. We respect them, we follow them. And we do not want to make issues on that. And this is what we call schools of thoughts. We should respect that. Now, sects clear, totally different. You are different, I am different. And if they are honest with one another, Allah knows what the judgment will fall on them. But there is also another category. Rather, I call it, it's not even a sect. It's not even what to call school of thoughts. I call it, it is a cult. C-U-L-T. And cult, today I realize, it's not even a cult, which the, my topic is going to start. Actually, I call it, it is a monetary mafia. 